Hi, this is Jessica Black from She Knows Arsenal, and this is my 41 cover story. So I'm from Los Angeles, but if I'm talking to somebody that's actually from LA, I'll say Walnut, California, because that's in the uh, suburbs of Los Angeles County. So yeah, that's where I'm from. It's a very small town. <laughs> when I was younger, I, I played. Um, almost everybody that was in my elementary school played AYSO growing up, and I was no different. I started about when I was six years old, and. I fell in love with the game from there, and that's kind of where my love for the game actually grew. Played all the way through college, and now I'm working in the sport, which is amazing. But yeah, it's just a lot of people played AYSO. I'm sure maybe you guys did too, because it was just the thing to do back then, and um, the rest is history. There's no connection to soccer whatsoever in my family. Nobody in my family played or even really knew anything about the sport. My mom actually just learned everything about soccer when I decided to start playing. And she's the type of mom that no matter what I do, she wants to be a part of it. So she became a ref, my dad coached, everything like that. But nobody else really knew anything about soccer until this day. I don't think anybody in my family has ever played but me. Yeah, people ask me about my origin story almost every single day. And I never get tired of telling the story because it involves my mom. And my mom is my best friend. She's the best person that I know. And yeah, we just, we both share a love for Arsenal. And like I said before, she didn't know anything about soccer before I started playing. And she's just the type of mom that if I wanted to do, if I wanted to be in ballet, she would have learned everything about ballet. If I wanted to be an astronaut, she would have learned everything about NASA. And so she decided to learn a lot about soccer. And at that time, um, early 2000s, late 90s, that around that, that time, I'm not gonna tell you guys my age, but around that time, we um, really liked to watch the game, but you could only really watch MLS or the US Women, which was great, but we wanted to see more. And my mom on the weekends would find games for us to watch. And it's funny because the first game that I ever watched that was a Premier League game was actually Man United. and. Um, it was Dwight York and Andy Cole and Roy Keane and Beckham and all of them were on the team. And I was like, oh, this team is cool. Maybe I'll follow this team. The very next weekend, my mom came running in to my room and she's like, Jess, you have to come watch this team. This, their name is Arsenal. And there's this guy on the team named Theory Henry. She didn't know it was Thierry Henry, but she was calling him Theory Henry. It was the funniest thing. And it was, you know, Robert Perez, Thierry Henry, Patrick Vieira, Arsene Wenger was obviously the manager at the time. And from the moment I saw that team, I was like, this is my team, this is it. Like, it stops here because I'd never seen a team full of players that look like me. I just, the, the way that they played, it was just mesmerizing. And so I have a very deep connection with Arsenal. It's pretty much my life. I talk about Arsenal on a daily basis and I wouldn't have it any different. Like. It's the best club, it's it's a community. Some of my best friends are Arsenal fans. Um, actually, the two guys behind the cameras are actually Arsenal fans as well. So you meet your community everywhere and Arsenal just feels like family to me. So it's the best decision I made and I'm glad that I uh, didn't go with Manchester United. So after high school, I knew I wanted to actually go to fashion school. And it's funny because I asked my dad if I can go to um, to Fitham because they came to my high school and started, they talked to us about going to Fitham and I was like, this is a school that I would absolutely want to go to. Magazines, fashion, creativity, all that kind of stuff. And he said, no, absolutely not because I had played soccer my entire life. So I ended up getting a scholarship to go to Georgia State. I played all the way through. And after I got out of college, I still didn't know what I wanted to do but my dad had agreed to let me go to FITM or to help me go to FITM after I went to Georgia State and played soccer. And that's exactly what I did. I got a visual, visual merchandising degree there. And after that, I still didn't know what I wanted to do because it didn't really feel like, it didn't feel right. I was doing window design, I was doing um, websites, I was doing a lot of different creative things, but it still didn't feel right. And so I became a flight attendant, which is a random story. And I won't go too far into it, but I was a flight attendant for five years. 
traveled the world, tried to figure out what I wanted to do, and then the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, I definitely started to really feel um, lost because there was no soccer to watch anymore. I was always watching soccer. There was nothing there because everything shut down. And so I started a YouTube channel so that I could talk to other Arsenal fans about you know the team and what's going on. It just grew from there. I never would have imagined that my YouTube channel would have grown the way that it did over the two years of the pandemic. And it felt great because it was, I could be creative. I could talk about soccer. I could talk about Arsenal. And that's kind of how I got where, where I am today. It's almost like I stumbled into it, but I feel like if you just keep searching and you keep your mind open, you can create something for yourself. And that's pretty much what I did. <laughs> Turning something that was kind of a hobby into a career has been difficult because you do have to learn everything from scratch. And one of the things that I, I am happy about is that when I went to FITM, I learned a lot of things that I've actually applied to my career as a content creator, everything from like Photoshop and Adobe and editing um, different videos and things like that. So I have like very basic skills, but YouTube is also your friend, Google is also your friend. And I use those things on a daily basis to try to figure out how to take everything to the next level, you know, learning how to make media kits, learning how to talk to brands, learning how to send out emails. And it's beyond just knowing how to do things. It's also the grind. You know, there are so many times where there's nothing there. I'm a freelance content creator. So sometimes there's nothing there, but I have to keep creating and showing people what I can do on a daily basis. And I reach out to different companies and brands and talk to them about what it will be like working together and how it could work for both of us. And learning how to be a freelance content creator is just grinding it out and using a lot of Google. And that's pretty much what I do. But yeah, it, it's, it's scary. It's scary because there's no safety net but I've never really had a job with a safety net beyond being a flight attendant and that didn't really sustain me either, like not inside. Inside I'm somebody that I'd rather take the risk and on a daily basis have to fight for what I want as long as what I'm fighting for is something that feels really good in my heart and that's all that really matters to me. So yeah, but it is scary. It's definitely scary, but um, I'm down for the ride. I really am and I think it's only up from here. So Arsenal have been affectionately called Arsenal Fashion Club for years. Arsenal always have the best gear, the best merch and the best collabs. And so watching the club do so many different things from very high fashion collabs with Stella McCartney to having collections geared totally to legends like what I have on now, which is the Ian Wright collection. I just think it's fantastic. I even love just the the Arsenal brand that they come out with that's like regular like day-to-day -day wear because they make it so wearable that you're literally wearing Arsenal in your normal life. And years ago, you would just wear the kit. That's it. Now you have whole lines of things that you can wear, everything from baby clothes to snow gear to whatever you need. I have an Arsenal onesie. So like, I love that Arsenal are figuring out ways to weave themselves into your life, like no matter what you wanna do. But I like the expression and the creativity that they go into and the quality of everything that they, that they have as well. And it's just showing that Arsenal are much more than just a football club, it's a culture. And um, anybody that's an Arsenal fan knows that it's literally your life. And so why not wear it as well? What's next for Shino's Arsenal? I think it's just keep, keep going. You know, I, one of the things that I really want to do, and especially in like 2024, is upgrade my level of content, you know, becoming a much better content creator. I know the game and I know what to talk about but I want things to look better and I want people that are subscribed to my channel to see it, that she's actually putting more effort and making things look better. So that's definitely one thing. And a lot of that just comes from, you know, talking to people and using Google and stuff like that. But for me personally, like as like a content creator and host, I just want to work with as many companies as possible and tell as many stories as possible. I want to tell the story of like what it's like being an American football fan and what it's like actually watching the game grow from nobody really caring to like people being actually like crazy for soccer in America. I wanna tell the story of being a woman in a male dominated industry. I'm focusing more on telling stories than anything else. So whoever I can work with and talk to about creating those stories, that's what I wanna do. But yeah, what I wrote in my, in my journal before 2024 started was tell more stories. 
And in the next five years, I would love to be like the next Kate Abdo type person. Like that would be amazing. Taylor Rooks, you know, those are the people that I look up to. If I had a little, you know, board in my room, those are the two people that I'd have on there because you watch some of these women in the, in the industry and you think like, wow, they do such great things. And so be a better interviewer, you know, get better on camera, learn how to, you know, do this, do that, you know, whatever it is that I need to do in order to get to that level. But yeah, next five years, it's just telling stories and, you know, getting my vision out there and being creative. You know, when I'm not overthinking things, that's when I do my best work. So yeah, just focus on the stories. If I had to give any advice to a young, you know, woman of color, you know, girl like me, um, of how to get into this industry and just get started is don't wait. Just get out there and just get started. One of the things that always stopped me from progressing early on in my 20s was the analysis paralysis, always thinking about what I need to be doing and looking at what everybody else is doing. And because I didn't have what they had or I didn't think I talked like they talked, I, I stopped. Like I just didn't do anything. And so it took me a long time to get to this point to press play and get it out there. And so it's better to start and modify it and edit it than never start it at all. And so I would just say, keep going and, and or get started and then keep going. And once you get your pushback, cause you will, because if you're a woman like me, the first thing that you're gonna hear is, oh my gosh, another woman talking about blah, blah, blah. Forget about it. Cause there's gonna be so many more people that love what you're doing than the negative voices. And the negative voices are always the loudest ones in the room, but there are a lot of silent, fans out there that just want to see you keep going so yeah if I could give you any advice get started and when you get your little bit of pushback keep going because there's so many people that are going to watch what you're doing and say wow they're bold I want to do that exact thing